Hello everybody and welcome to uh, episode 9 coming to you from Kings Cross Station. No, I'm not boarding a train to Hogwarts, I'm boarding a train to Edinburgh uh, for a weekend away in Edinburgh, so really looking forward uh, to that. So come with me and I'll show you around the sights and sounds of the beautiful city of Edinburgh. Well, here we are in Edinburgh Waverley Station. It's a four hour trip from London up to Edinburgh. Uh, lively bunch of people on the train there. To uh, checking in and then going and exploring uh, the city of Edinburgh. Just in case you're in any doubt, we definitely are in Scotland now. Nicholas, why are we outside a church? I hear you ask. Well, let me tell you a story. We're at Greyfriars Church, and uh, in the 1800s, there lived a man named John Gray. However, he died at the age of 45 of tuberculosis. Now, he had a dog called Bobby, a Scottish Skye Terrier. Now, for 14 years, every day, that dog would come and wait for his master at his gravesite. Bobby the dog did this for 14 years until he himself died. Some even suggest that Bobby the Scottish Terrier still wanders the streets of Edinburgh looking for his master, if you subscribe to that kind of stuff. However, the cynic, such as myself, might think that maybe this is just a ploy to sell soft, fluffy toys of dogs. And there we have Bobby the dog himself. Carrying on the more morbid aspects of our tour of Edinburgh, here we have what's called an iron mort safe. This was placed over the grave to prevent grave robbers from digging up the bodies and the corpses and selling them to anatomy schools and medical schools. This trade in dug-up bodies carried on until 1832 when the Anatomy Act was passed preventing such a trade. Notable body traders include Burke and Hare. Now they initially would dig bodies up to sell to the medical schools. However, because bodies were in such high demand, they actually started killing people and selling the bodies to uh, the um, medical schools instead. Now should you be competing in any pub quizzes anytime soon, it will be important to know that in Scotland, churches are called kirks. So here we are at uh, the grass market here in uh, Edinburgh. Uh, this was once the medieval marketplace uh, for Edinburgh, and it's also where they held uh, their uh, executions as well. Uh, so many thousands of people hung here uh, over the centuries, uh, so it's now a bit of a hub for pubs and you also notice a little bit of market going on in the background there and another little market going on uh, up there. It's also uh, the beginnings of our walk uh, up to the castle as well so uh, stand by for that. So we're almost there, it's a fair few steps up to the castle. See the castle behind me there and ye olde medieval uh, sports stadium in the background there as well. So here we are at Edinburgh Castle, built in ye olde times, for ye olde kings, for ye olde people, and ye olde days. And surrounding the castle is ye olde sports stadium seating, which uh, I suspect is for the military tattoo. And there we have the inscription on the castle, which says, uh, when translated, you'll find Nemo inside. So here we are entering the castle through the Port Cullis Gate, uh, built in 1577. Here we are at Edinburgh Castle, atop Castle Rock, where there's been a castle for uh, the past 800 years. Now you might wonder, who owns such a beautiful castle? Well, you'd be wrong if you thought it was the Queen. It's actually the Scottish Government that owns it. And at £16.50, I suspect the Scottish Government is making a killing. But how was Castle Rock formed, I hear you ask? Well, let me tell you a story. It all started 350 million years ago when a volcano exploded and the molten rock turned to solid rock. Quite large, I suspect the Scottish were overcompensating for something. As Freud would say. So here we are in the middle of Edinburgh Castle. Behind me we have the Royal Residence and also 
uh, where the crown jewels are held for uh, Scotland. Uh, then over here we have uh, the memorial, the Scottish War Memorial from uh, 1914 to 1918. Uh, ye medieval Cathay. And then the Great Hall. And here we are in the oldy medieval cafe taking a load off after a day of uh, archery and uh, jousting. So here we are continuing our adventure around Edinburgh. We're now on the Royal Mile and we're making our way down to Holyrood Palace and the Scottish Parliament. So I'll see you in a minute. Now when walking down the Royal Mile, be sure to check out these little laneways. Just to confirm, we're still very much in Scotland. Here we are outside the Scottish Parliament. So, had Scotland voted yes in 2014, this is where they would have been governed from, rather than the token uh, Parliament that they have now. It's been described as, and I quote, a bit like student accommodation. And across the road, is the entrance to Holyrood Palace, which we'll go and check out now. And so here we are at the end of the Royal Mile. Turns out it's actually three miles long, so it was quite a long walk, but never mind. So behind me, we've got the Scottish Parliament there. And then down at the very end here is Holyrood Palace, which is the Queen's official residence when she does business down here uh, in uh, Scotland. Uh, knocked on the gate, uh, however she's uh, not home. Uh, however she is open to meeting with me tomorrow for uh, tea at 11 o'clock, uh, so that'll be quite nice. Uh, so check back in uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, I'll introduce you to the Queen. So our next and final stop uh, today uh, of our tour around Edinburgh is up to Carlton Hill. Uh, which has been described by some as uh, one of the best spots and one of the best views here in uh, the beautiful and gorgeous city of Edinburgh. So uh, we'll see you uh, up at Carlton Hill. Beautiful. Welcome everybody to day two of uh, Edinburgh. We've got another jam packed day. We've got 12 hours here until our train uh, leaves at 11 21 uh, pm today. So, some genius decided that that was a good time to uh, book a train back to London. However, never mind. Uh, here we are in the beautiful little enclave of uh, Dean's Village, uh, just on the outskirts of the old part of the town here in uh, Edinburgh. As you can see, it's a beautiful little uh, quaint little village, uh, historical in nature. Uh, we've got the Edinburgh School Board over there. Uh, it was uh, built in 1875. Take a look at the church up there. That's St John's Church, which is just next door to where we were staying in uh, Belgrave Crescent. Uh, so, in terms of what we're going to do today, it's next stop after the seat. So uh, here we are meandering along the Leaf Valley Walk. It's a beautiful uh, little walk along the Leaf River here. Uh, so we've encountered lots of bikers and runners and walkers and dogs. So it's clearly the place to be seen on a Sunday morning. Uh, so definitely if you get the opportunity when you're in Edinburgh and want uh, some quiet time, definitely this is the place to come. It's not far out of the city centre. Uh, one thing I noticed with uh, the Scottish accent, um, it's a beautiful accent, it's a beautiful brogue, uh, however it's quite hard to uh, understand and I found myself understanding more German on reflection than what I can pick up of um, those with a really thick, uh, strong Scottish accent. Uh, particularly uh, on the bus yesterday I had no idea uh, what he was saying to me, uh, however he was extremely helpful and uh, it's a beautiful uh, so one thing we're going to do today is see if we can't find uh, some uh, deep fried Mars bars, so enjoy some uh, Scottish uh, gastronomy, uh, so that should be uh, quite fun uh, to try that, never tried one before. Uh, we've found some uh, remnants there. So now we just need to find the real thing.
Here we are at Arthur's Seat, at the base of the mountain here. And all its glory over there. Two hours up and two hours down apparently. Got our supplies, a litre of water, hopefully that's enough. Got a film crew over there. You don't need all this whiz bangery to uh, do a show. Um, it's all just smoke and mirrors, and all you need is a man and his camera. So we're about to climb uh, Arthur's seat. We'll see you at the top. Well, we made it. Here we are at Arthur's seat, 251 feet tall. Uh, beautiful, beautiful sky. Uh, shout out to my camera crew. They did it here with me as well. Uh, so shout out to you guys. And there you have it, take one last look at the beautiful city of Edinburgh because it's time to say goodbye. <laughs>